uh, once we have assessed our you know whether the intubation would be difficult or not now the second thing in the preparation part is having everything ready at the bedside that is preparing the equipment so what all things do we need in preparing the equipment like we would need a ambu mask we need oxygen source we, we would need suction we'll need our laryngoscope kit with the assortments of blade we'll need et tube stillet syringes we'll need assistants who are familiar with the procedure i will and should be secured the monitor should be connected your all the um, medicines should be there at the bedside your backup plan that is buji stillet lma and the rescue airway devices should be there your oximetry and capnography monitoring should be there and you know uh then you have to check whether everything is working or not now monitor the patient the as i told cardiac monitor should be there you have you need to have your blood pressure monitoring pulse oximetry and capnography if it's available or not now coming on to the second piece that is the pre oxygenation so the person who is breathing on its own needs to at least you have to pre oxygenate with 100% oxygen why non breather mask at least for at least 3 minutes the person who is not breathing on it or, or the patient is in imminent respiratory uh, arrest you have to at least uh, give eight ambu ventilation so that we have this nitrogen wash out and there is some reserve you know uh, available with us now uh, what uh, if the person is uh, already breathing on its own we don't uh, use positive pressure ventilation like don't start and i will lead to gastric distension there can be you know chance of aspiration vomiting and chance of aspiration so the use of an iv just before intubating is not uh, so lidocaine is used as one of the pre medication drug especially in the patient who has had a head injury Uh, other uh, pre medication drugs could be atropine but now it's generally not used generally we used to use uh, use atropine to prevent bradycardia uh, because bradycardia can happen because just copy and because of the hypoxia with that so if the patient goes into bradycardia be used now in the action yeah so when we talk about paralytic the most commonly used paralytic is succinylcholine which is the only depolarizing paralytics in clinical use which has a rapid onset and short duration but what it causes it causes fasciculation uh, the dosing is 1.5 mg per kg iv it should be immediately given after a sedative and uh, the onset is very rapid usually between 30 to 90 second and the duration is short again that is between 3 to 5 minutes so there are few contraindication where a succinylcholine drug should not be given like in severe burn which is more than 24 year old 24 hours old uh, in massive crush injury which is more than 8 hours old uh Irritating eye injury, narrow angle vision is all because of the complication of uh, precipitating hyperkalemia and uh, going into the renal injury. Other paralytic agent which are more safer are rocuronium, vicuronium, and atracurium. Rocuronium, these are our uh, these are our your non depolarized rocuronium. Now. so uh, now what till now what we have done we have prepared we have pre oxygenated we have given pre medication we have uh, paralyzed the patient and now doing the laryngoscope 
and passing the now that we do a direct uh, visualization so you can so we were at uh, you know passing the tube uh, where our backup plan was if you are unable to intubate then you have to go ahead with the bag mask ventilation if it's still unsuccessful continue the uh, bag mask ventilation put uh, continue the cricoid pressure and then put in a lma uh, 